Glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I, I say this every Sunday and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Look around and see who's not around you that's normally around you. And would you call and check on them and uh, ask God to touch them. We have some that are working, some on the road, some are sick. I know baby Josiah is sick this morning. We've got others that are sick and facing issues in their life. So uh, be much in prayer for them. Pray it one for another because I read where the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Stand with me all over the house one more time. Amen. I might need to set you down and stand you up again to get those donuts off of you you're going to eat. But Amen. I want to share with you this morning a thought that God laid in my heart. Anybody ever kind of find yourself struggling? And it's easy to say, well, I struggle with finances and I struggle with this and I struggle with that. But have you ever found yourself in a real fight? I want to talk this morning to you about fighting God. Fighting God. Would you go with us to the book of Acts chapter 5? Acts chapter 5, verse 38. I want to share with you for a few moments, if we will. Acts chapter 5, 38. When you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, look on the screen. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. Lest happily ye be found even to be fighting against God. Fighting against God. Can I read it real quick again? This is words of wisdom from a very wise man. He says, now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. Lest happily you will be found even to be fighting against God. God dealt with my heart on this thought that I want to share with you this week. Would you pledge allegiance to the Bible with us? I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Let's pray. Gracious Father, Lord, this morning we come before you. God, I thank you for the honor that has been given to individuals here today. God, I just pray you'll bless and you'll move in a supernatural way as we give honor to you. I pray, Lord, you'll anoint us and you'll help us to preach this word as you have laid it in our hearts. God, I pray that you will use us, God, to speak to this people. And that this day they will receive a revelation of your power, your greatness in their life. Of what you're trying to do in their life. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God bless you as you're seated this morning. I titled this message, Fighting God, or Fighting Against God. Now, doesn't that seem absurd? Doesn't that seem weird to be fighting against God? Nobody would dare fight with God. Yet I find in the Bible where people were wrestling with God. And it's more than just Bible days. It's in this day and age that we live. Uh, you see, we would say no one would fight against God. That's the religious thing to say. Yet in our own way and on our, in our own life, I think we all do fight with God. There, there's a battle that's going on. And probably more often than we would like to admit. And so often there is a conflict uh, between God and man. Man often fights with God more than Satan. I'm going to say that again. We often fight with God as much or more than we do with Satan. And you say, oh, now preacher, where are you going? Now, I want you to understand, we wrestle and we fight with God. When, it, when God wants us to do something or, or say something or go somewhere and, and do something, for instance. Uh, matter of fact, just let God ask you to witness to a stranger and see if you aren't fighting with God about it. Just, just, just let God ask you to testify or, or stand in front of a crowd. Now, if today someone was to come and say, hey, I want you to stand on the stage. I want you to give a testimony. Every one of you would begin fighting with God. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. All of a sudden, now, God, I can't do that. God, I, I, and, and let God ask you to pay tithes or give a little extra in the offering or, or give of your time or, or fast for a few meals or or, 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 or 
or, or do something special, you'll find yourself fighting uh, against God. We'll even fight against the Word of God. Uh, we'll take the Word of God and we'll twist it and, and we'll turn it to make it say what we want it to say. Have you ever found yourself doing that? You're trying to prove a point or you're trying to justify an action and, and you'll go and you'll thumb through all the scriptures that, uh, that you can use to justify what you're doing. Now, hear me this morning. Now, there are times when we all fight against God, I believe. Many times we're fighting against God unconsciously. We really don't mean to. I've found this in my own life. We're in a situation and, and we don't know what to do and we don't know which way to turn and we're trying to find God's will but we don't understand God's plan. Have you ever been there? God, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what to do. And so the struggle begins. Uh, I have found myself uh, saying, God, I'm really not sure of your perfect will right now. I really don't know exactly, but God, after praying and reading, uh, this is what I believe it to be. So I'm doing this action, whatever it may be, I'm doing this. Uh, Lord, trying to follow you and not in rebellion to you. Sometimes we as God's people, we begin to fight against God's people. Can I get one amen in the house? Now look, if you've been in church, uh, come on now, somebody. If you've been in church, you'll find God's people fighting against God's people. You'll find that from time to get, time and time when we fight against one another because what they're doing or what we think they ought to do doesn't fit into our box. And so we believe they're wrong and we're right and, and we're following God and they're not. And in the process, we begin fighting one another and we're ending up really in reality fighting God. In God's plan, in God's will. I, I, I've said to God before in prayers, God, I, I really don't mind going through this thing as long as I know it's your will. I, then, God, I'll be glad to go through it. We must realize this morning I, that it's not smart, I, it's not profitable, I, and it's not easy to fight against God. It's not. But we do it so often. I remember God speaking to a man. You probably remember that man named Paul. At the time he went by the name of Saul. And God had knocked him off of his horse in the dust of a Damascus road. And spoke to him because he thought he was fighting, fighting Christianity and fighting Jesus. And God knocked him off his horse and said, Hey, Saul, it's not good for you to fight against me. It's hard to kick against the pricks. That's what Acts chapter 9 and verse 5 said. God said it's hard uh, for you to fight uh, against the pricks. Uh, and uh, when you understand that prick, it's a, a pointed stick that, that stabs and cuts into you. Uh, you see the story that I shared with you this morning. Peter and the, uh, the apostles had been apprehended and locked into a prison. An angel of the Lord had come and brought them out of the prison and said, I want you to go and stand and speak. So instead of them fighting what God wanted them to do, the world was trying to shut them up. But God released them out of prison and said, I want you to go back. I want you to go stand. And I want you to go speak. And it would have been easy for them to say, but God, they'll lock us up again. And God, they told us not to. But they once again began to preach the word of God. And again, the religion people came against them and, and locked them up and where I was reading to you this morning in the book of Acts uh, they are standing on trial and when Peter is given an opportunity to, to speak uh, he declared this uh, we ought to obey God rather than man in other words, what he said, I'm not fighting with you. And this is not me and your battle. This is me and God. And, and I refuse to fight against what God said. And God told us to go and to stand and to speak. And he took an advantage of an opportunity to witness instead of defend himself, uh, as so many of us do. Uh, and it angered the council so much uh, that instead of defending himself, uh, he's preaching and, and doing the very thing they condemned him to do. And it angered them the, so much that they decided we want to kill them. We'll kill them. And in the council that day, 
In the middle of all the anger and the battle and the conflict, there was a man, a rabbi, a teacher named Gamaliel that, that stood up. Now, this man was a man of great wisdom, and he taught many. As a matter of fact, that Paul that I talked about a few moments ago, he was one of his teachers, and he taught many of the ways. And so he asked this. He, he stood up in the middle of this conflict to understand what was happening. Now, the disciples are standing there and saying, we believe God, and we're going to obey God. And that council was saying, uh, kill them, kill them, stone them, do away with them. And he stands up, and he, he quietens the crowd for a moment. He says, okay, let me just ask for, the, the, for these men to go out. Uh, put them out of the room. Get them out of the room. And he began to address the council. And he looked at these men that was ready to kill them, and he began to tell them stories. He began to name names of different people that had rose up and brought them, and thought themselves to be somebody. He would say, don't you remember old Joe? And that's not the names the Bible uses. But he said, don't you remember how they rose up and thought they were somebody? And, and they were strong for a while and then they faded away. And he, he gave them example after example of, of how they rose up and was big for a little bit and then disappeared. And then he used these words that I read to you this morning as he looked at that council and he looked at these men in Acts chapter 5 and verse 38 uh, and he said refrain from these men and let them alone for if this council or this work be of men it'll be overthrown it'll disappear it won't amount to nothing literally in South Alabama terms he said don't worry about trying to fix it you are fighting a battle that does not need to be fought you're troubling yourself over, uh, over things that you don't need to be troubling yourself over. I, I believe one of the greatest wisdoms that I have learned uh, in my years uh, is to choose your battles. Look at your neighbor and say, choose your battles. Choose your battle. Choose those battles with that husband and with that wife and with those, with those children and with your parents. Uh, some battles are not worth the fight. Some battles are not worth fighting. Uh, all they do is cause you to lose sleep and, and, uh, and lose peace and lose friends uh, because you want to win. Don't worry about it. Leave it alone. The truth will always come out. And that's what this great teacher was trying to tell them. In chapter 5, verse 39, he says this. Uh, after he says, refrain from them. Leave them alone. Uh, if this is a work of men, it'll be overthrown. But then he says, but if it's of God... You will not be able to overthrow it. If this is a God thing, uh, there's nothing you can do uh, about it uh, but except find yourself uh, fighting against God. Do you understand what he was saying? He's saying, yeah, be careful of your actions. You, if you're not careful of your actions, you'll be fighting uh, against God. And my friend, can I tell you, uh, fighting God is a dangerous place to be in life because he always wins. He's never lost a battle yet. Uh, yet we find ourselves time and time again fighting against God. Uh, we'll push through relationships. Uh, we'll push through friendships. Uh, we'll kick doors open uh, that he's trying to close or keep closed. Uh, or we won't go through doors that he's opening for us to go through. And we'll fight him with everything that is within us. Uh, we'll be kicking and screaming and even quoting scriptures uh, because somehow we think we know best for us uh, instead of God knowing best. Come on, can I get an amen from somebody? I'm going to get right where you live this morning. We fight, fight, we fight God for our wants and we fight God for what our will, what I want and what I want for my life. God, I know you told me to do this, but I want to do that. We fight against his will for our life. We forget, fight against his desires for us to live far away from sin. And even we fight against God when he's saying, I want you to come into my presence and get close to me. Many times uh, we are even unaware that we're fighting God. We're doing it almost unconsciously uh, and we're trying to make things happen. Uh, most of the time we fit into one of two categories uh, when we're fighting God. Uh, you're probably there, and I, I classify these categories as someone who knows God's will for their life. You say, what are you saying? You know God's will for your life, 
but you won't accept it. There's those of you sitting in this house today. You know what God wants you to do. You know God's will for your life. Uh, you've heard God speak. Uh, you've heard God pull and tug in your heart and tug in your life. God called you, yet you, re you refused. Uh, I could stand here and name you several men that I know that have sat in my office and said, I know God called me to preach. That's why I'm going through the things I am because they chose to run from God. I, I've heard them say, uh, that's the reason I can't be blessed. and That's the reason. Uh, but I'm scared and I don't know how to and I, I don't want to. And, and so instead of obeying God's will, they're fighting with God uh, against. There's others that God has called you into ministry and yet you resist uh, and you run from God's will uh, and you are fighting God with everything that is within you. And you're restless and all these things. Many times we fight God because of people in our lives and positions in our life. Uh, we're fighting God yet every day saying, God bless me, God bless me. Uh, can I get somebody just to say, you know what, I, I've been there. I'm fighting God. God, I know you wanted me to do this, but God, I can't do that. And I'm not going to do that, but Lord, would you bless me? And that battle is, is going back and forth between you and God. Uh, some of you in this house, God has been pulling you and pushing you and tugging and drawing. Uh, there's some of you that God has put you right in the middle of great blessings uh, and you're still fighting him. Uh, some of you, you, he set you in the midst of turmoil and tragedy to get your attention uh, and you're still fighting God. Uh, you can be found in great conflict uh, fighting God and that's a very scary thing. And then there's others today that you really don't know God's will for your life. You're, you're in that place and you're, you're trying to find what God's will. There's that category of I know what God wants me to do, but I'm just flat refusing to do it because I'm scared and a hundred more reasons. And then those sitting out there saying, you know what, I really don't know God's will for my life, but I would like to. And see, it seems like you're lost and, and you can't find your way. Why was I created? What am I supposed to be doing in life? And what am I supposed to be doing for Christ? And what is God's will for my life? Why did God put me here? Why has God still got me here? I know I'm probably the only one that's ever felt that way, but I'm here to tell you there's times in our life when those questions uh, run through our minds. First, let me tell you God's will for your life. Uh, if you're sitting in this house and you're breathing, uh, I know God's will for your life. First of all, His will is for you to be saved. God's will is for you to be saved. That's the reason he sent his only begotten son. He sent Jesus that you may be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And then, then find, you must find that salvation and find that peace with God and find that relationship with God. And I need to explain just real briefly here. Being saved doesn't mean that I shook a preacher's hand, I joined a church, I go to church. Being saved means I've got a real relationship relationship uh, with Jesus Christ uh, and I'm living and striving to please him in every day. That's God's will for your life. God didn't plan for nobody to go to hell except Lucifer and the fallen angels. God's will for your life is to go to heaven uh, through his son Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the reason Jesus said I'm going to prepare you a place. Uh, I'm going to fix, I didn't fix hell for you. I'm going to prepare you a place. His will is for you to be saved. And then after you're saved, uh, his will is for, to find the very reason that he created you, that he formed you, that he breathed life into you. Uh, he created you for a reason. Amen. He created you for a reason. Uh, can I tell you this morning, uh, you are not a mistake. You are a purpose. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you are a purpose. God had a purpose in mind when he created you. God had a purpose in mind for you when conception was made. Uh, the most important thing you can do after salvation is to find his will for your life uh, and follow it and not fight it. Allow him to lead you and watch what happens in your life. By this time, some of you are sitting there saying, well, that sounds good. How do I do that, Pastor? Let me just tell you, uh, you're not going to do that uh, with a casual acquaintance with Jesus, uh, with a casual acquaintance with God. Uh, you're going to have to seek till you find His will. Uh, you're going to have to search uh, till you know it. Uh, you're just going to take some praying. Uh, it's going to take some fasting. Uh, it's going to take some reading uh, for His will in your life. Uh, you're going to have to seek until you find God's will. Uh, search 
search until you find God's will. Uh, pray till you find God's will. That's what the Bible says. It says, seek and you shall find. Uh, Knock and it shall be open. Uh, Ask and you shall receive. Uh, Can I ask you this morning, uh, when is the last time you have earnestly prayed uh, and said, God, show me your will for my life. Show me my purpose. Show me the reason for my life. When is the last time you've bowed on your knees before God uh, and cried out and said, God, my life is not my own. Uh, You created me. You breathed life into me. Uh, Now, God, what would you have me to do? The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Cry out to God saying, God, show me. Uh, And God, when you show me, I'm not going to fight your will, uh, but I'm going to pursue your will for my life. Uh, No matter what it may be, uh, I'm going to pursue it. If if you call me to preach, I'll preach. Uh, If you call me to go, I'll go. Uh, God, whatever you want me to do, uh, you know what I have found? Uh, When you really begin to seek and earnestly pray and ask God, God, I want to know your will. Uh, God, I want to know what you'd have me to do. Uh, That I have found that most of the time, God's will will come from your strength see God didn't call me to sing God's will for my life is not to sing if it was he gave me a voice to sing God builds in our strength and what we see is weakness in our life God sees a strength the Bible tells us that great men of faith and through faith that men and women in Hebrews 11 33 and 34 it's talking about great men and women of faith and it says through faith they subdued kingdoms they wrought righteousness they obtained promises they stopped the mouths of lions they quenched the violence of fire they escaped the edge of the sword they didn't do it out of strength but it said out of weakness uh, they were made strong uh, I just want to tell you this morning uh, honey God's will is not dependent on your strength and your weakness uh, he can take your weakness uh, and make strength out of that weakness God's will for your life uh, is for you to say God whatever you want me to do uh, whatever you would have me to do uh, here am I God uh, send me uh, send me God uh, I want you uh, he will strengthen our weakness uh, so I'm telling somebody this morning uh, stop fighting God uh, if it's God your weakness uh, your past uh, your enemy or anything else won't overthrow or stop what God is wanting to do in your life I remembered when I was, uh, uh, years ago, as I was making these notes, I, I, I was thinking years ago, uh, I, it's hard for many of you to believe, but I was really shy and really bashful, and, and, and I wouldn't hardly speak or talk at all. Uh, but I remember about the 11th grade, God began to turn things, and I didn't even understand it. Out of a, out of a, out of a joke almost, or out of rebellion, maybe that's a better way to say it, I, I was voted in as if. FFA president in our school class uh, and they were others that was a lot more qualified and better but all of a sudden you know what uh, it made me have to stand up in front of people and I thought God this is crazy but I, little did I know that years later I'd be standing up in front of people uh, continually and on a continual basis uh, and I want you to understand God took that weakness uh, and made it strong I've had friends that I went to school with said man you got a split personality uh, when you get on that stage you become a different purpose uh, a person uh, I want you to understand this morning uh, there's no better place uh, and there's no greater place than God's perfect will for your life There is no better place or no more perfect place than God's perfect will. Yet when you turn that around, uh, there is no more miserable place uh, than being out of the will of God uh, and not going God's will for your life. Let me give you some indications real quick. Uh, on, on, On God begin to deal with me when you're fighting with God. I want you to understand to fight against God is to fight against yourself. Fighting with yourself. And I'm telling you, I do that constantly. And I'm sure some of you do that same thing. Uh, There's an inward conflict that's going on. Uh, Life will only work well when it is lived uh, in harmony with God's will. Uh, Your life will only operate smoothly. Uh, Your life will only fall into place uh, when you're living in harmony with the will of God. So you're saying, if I'm in the will of God, uh, then I won't ever have no trouble. No, honey, you'll have trouble. Uh, These apostles died because they were in the will of God. But I want you to understand uh, there was a peace with inside of them uh, that said uh, it passes all understanding. Uh, I know the world around me is in conflict, uh, but there's peace inside of me. 
I want you to hear me this morning. When we get to the place uh, where we aren't happy with everyone else, uh, it's usually a sign that we're unhappy with ourselves. We lose that inward peace that is within us. Within our life, and we lose our, lose our direction and our ministry, and we're mad and we're irritable and we're hard to be around or live with, and we think everybody else is wrong, and it's usually we that are wrong. God, don't look at anybody or punch anybody in the side right now, but you know some of those people. You may be one of those people. I, everybody else is wrong. I'm the only one right. I, I'm irritable. I, nobody wants to be around me. I, my kids tell me that often, so I want you to understand. I, but when you're in the wheel, of God and when you're where God wants you to be there you, you, you'll be a peace inside of you there'll be joy inside of you but when you're fighting God you'll lose your peace and you'll lose your joy and when you lose that peace and you lose that joy it'll bring a weakness inside of you David prayed. David, he began to pray. I'm talking about David who was in the will of God killing a giant. Now we find him saying, God, you got to restore to me the joy of my salvation. God, I've got out of your will. I've got out of what you'd have me to do. The Bible says the joy of the Lord. It is our strength. And when we are right with God, we have peace. And when we have peace, we have joy. And as if you got peace, that joy will naturally follow uh, just as much as night follows day uh, joy follows peace the Bible tells us this thing is joy unspeakable and full of glory Paul tells us in Romans 14 and 47 he tells us the kingdom of God is not meat and drink it's not possessions that you gather it's not things that you acquire but he says the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost I want somebody to understand here today God says I want you to have peace and joy and it comes through righteousness and finding the will of God when we find ourselves fighting with God, it brings a loss of power in our life and a loss of strength in our lives. We become weak and we become weary and we become worn. You know what I can really tell people are really fighting God? They don't want to come to church anymore. They don't want to smile anymore. They don't want to sing anymore. They don't want to work for God. They just want to give up. I've seen great men and women of God that once knew the will of God for their life and then all of a sudden they're giving up ministry and they're giving up reading the word of God. They're giving up praying. You know how I can tell? This is a... This will hit everybody here. You know how I can tell when somebody's really fighting God and, and, and getting out of the will of God at altar call? They don't come to the altar anymore. I've seen it through years of ministry. People that was once on fire for God. People that was active. All of a sudden, they don't come to the altar anymore at prayer time. They don't gather and pray at the close of service. They're busy doing this or that or the, the other. You must understand what Satan is, trying, Satan is trying to do is to separate you. And if he can separate you and isolate you, he will conquer you. That's the reason he sells that line. And you don't have to go to church. You don't have to go to church to be saved. You, you don't have to go to go, go gather with those people all the time. You don't have to. Though. Those people are fake and many more lies. But the Bible tells us to not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You need the social of others in your life. Other Christians to build you up and to pray for you. You need that prayer time around the altar. The key enemy keeps us fighting God and fighting each other. And we fight against ourselves so we've lost our inward peace. We lost our joy. We lost our power. We lost our strength. And we find ourselves fighting. And then we're in conflict with others. The whole world is wrong. And I'm the only one that's right. The whole world is against me. And I'm just fighting and I'm fighting and fighting. And we're crying out, God, where is you? And, and God is there trying to, uh, trying to get close to you. And you're pushing him aside and, and fighting him. I, I mean, it's just like two, two cats fighting, if you will. Uh, and we don't even understand it. God is saying, I want to get close to you and, and get you in the center of my will. And you're saying, but God, I don't want to. I don't want to. But Lord, would you bless me? Let's stop for a moment and assess yourself this morning. What? Check yourself out. Look at your mind and your heart and your thoughts. 
Because already somebody is thinking this morning while I've been preaching, you've been sitting there, boy, saying, I sure hope so and so is hearing what he's saying. I sure hope they're listening. I sure hope I'm going to buy a CD and give it to them. They need to hear it. I just want you to understand I'm preaching to you right now. Are you fighting with God? What's God's will for your life? When's the last time you said, God, I want to know your perfect will. God, I want to know what you'd have me to do. God, I want to know where you have me be. Uh, God, I want to know. Uh, I want you to think, uh, God, are, are we in a battle right now? Whether intentionally or not. Uh, I, today, God challenged me to tell you, stop fighting what God is trying to do in your life. God's trying to do some things in your life. God's trying to lead you. God's trying to guide you. He's trying to bless you. Stop fighting what God is trying to do. He's trying to work on your behalf. That's what this great rabbi said. He offered this advice. He said, look, leave them alone. Verse 38, you remember what he said? He said, refrain. Leave these men alone. If this is God, if this is counsel of men, it'll, it'll, it'll pass. This morning I want to challenge you to stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to fix it. You're trying to run around trying to fix everything. It's not broken. God's working a plan. It could be God. Are you hindering the work of God? If it's not God, it'll be overthrown. God don't need your help fixing it. It will come to an end. But if you are following God and allowing His will, honey, don't restrict God. God, whatever you want to do. Some of the greatest things that I thought were not of God in my life, I found out that God was working on my behalf. And I didn't understand it. I was trying to stop it. I was trying to detour it. I was trying to turn it. But they turned out to be just what God wanted for my life. What are you fighting? Could it be God trying to work in your life? I want to encourage you this morning to find the perfect will of God for your life. Don't be afraid to trust God. Don't be afraid. Quit being angry at everybody. Let God work. God may be drawing you out from that crowd that he can speak directly to you. God may be trying to put you in the midst of that crowd so they'll encourage you. I don't know what God's doing in your individual life, but I believe God is trying to work some things to good in your life because the Bible says that all things work together for good. That them that love the Lord. Step out of faith. Get out of your comfort zone. Can I just say that again for some of you this morning? Get out of your comfort zone. God's trying to bless you. God's trying to lead you into his will. Heal a relationship. Ask forgiveness. Uh, give forgiveness. Uh, don't be afraid to test the waters uh, to see if it's God. Uh, in God's will, you will find peace and joy and life and excitement and fulfillment. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Excuse me, verse 1, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Can you understand what the writer is saying? He's saying, take yourself. And give it to God. Give it to God holy and acceptable. And I love the way he said, this is just your reasonable service. This is the reason he created you. That you may give yourself to God. That you may present yourself to God. It's not some extraordinary service. Uh, the devil beats me up all the time. Well, they're just abusing you and using you and accusing you. Uh, and I'm reminded of that scripture. Uh, honey, this is just a sacrifice. And I'm just giving to God. A living sacrifice. But he says, in doing that, then that you may prove or, or you may find the will of God for your life. Look, he said, the good will. Find the good will. That word, word good, good will, when you look at it and dig into it, it means the beneficial. What is God's beneficial will for your life? What kind of will, what kind of benefits is God trying to give you by being in that will? The good will of God. Now, that's the reason the angel said, I, I've got good news. Uh, uh, God's good will is towards you. God is one of God's beneficials uh, that he benefits and he wants to give you. Then he said the acceptable will. There's the good will and the acceptable will. What is the acceptable will? It's fully agreeable, agreeable, well pleasing. What is the pleasing will of God for your life? What is that, what is that agreement will in your life? And then the Bible says the perfect will. When we think of the perfect will, 
We think, okay, everything's going to get perfect. You know what the word perfect means? Complete. What is the complete will for God's life, God's will in your life? There's that benefit will. There's that agreeable will. And then that complete will for God in your life. Some of you are looking at me like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Could I just tell you God created you, and he formed you, and he fashioned you, and he has a will for your life. I'm telling you, your life could change drastically when you get in the complete will of God, when you allow God to work in your life, when you can begin to move God in your life. Uh, Miss T is in here this morning, uh, and I thought for ye- I thought about her for, for years. Uh, there have been uh, she, We've been pastor of a church, and, and for years, everybody keeps wanting to make her a, uh, the uh, traditional pastor's wife, if there is such a thing, where, where she's doing all the things, and, and they're telling her, you don't need to be in children's ministry, and you don't need to be in that, and she's quick to stand and say, look, uh, God's will for my life. I, I found out it's completely complete will, his whole will, and God put me to minister to children, and that always been first and foremost in her life, and I've always honored her for that, because everybody else is trying to get her into their will, and where they want her, and what they want her to do, but she says, no, I know where God has called me, and and planted me, and I thank God that she throws in pastor's wife in there some too, but I want you to understand here this morning, there is a complete will of God for your life, and this morning, my challenge to you is uh, quit fighting God and start finding his will obeying God remember Jesus in the garden you probably know the story of how he was in the garden just hours before he went to pray he was praying okay God let this cup fast for me let this trial let this cross this crucifixion God let it I really don't want to go through it God it's going to be horrible it's going to be tough but he would say Lord let this cup pass from me but then he would follow it up and he'd say nevertheless uh, not my will but your will be done Uh, God I want your will in my life even if it means being crucified Uh, whatever it takes uh, God I want you to be uh, your will to be first in my life Can I just tell you this morning, some of you are out of the will of God. Some of you are fighting God. Uh, Some of you are fighting and wondering why the one in the world is going on. Uh, I tell you what's going on. Uh, God loves you enough that he's not leaving you, uh, but he's standing there fighting with you, uh, trying to get you into the will of God, trying to break you and bring you into the place uh, that he wants you to be. I thought about a, a strong horse. He's got energy and he's got strength. Everything about him, but he's of no good until he's broken. When he is broken, then he becomes the will of the rider instead of his own will. He's still got the same strength. He's still got the same power. But his will now is the will of the rider or the one operating him. And some of you have got great talents and great abilities and great strengths and and great finances and and great things in your life. Uh, And God is saying, if I could ever get all of that into my will, uh, then I can do something mighty through you. Uh, But you keep fighting and you keep running and you keep uh, keep, keep, uh, that struggle going on. Uh, And some of you hear me this morning. Uh, I see it in your life and I I see it when I talk to you. Uh, God has things that he wants to do in your life. And and do through your life and and you want to go there but the tug of your own will is so strong uh, that you're fighting God and what God wants you to do Uh, this morning can I just tell you uh, that if you're not careful you'll find yourself fighting against God and losing that that God is trying to bless you with I want to close by with these simple guidelines because I, I wrote these guidelines down years ago and this is what I try to go by because Believe it or not, I get a lot of advice. Everybody can tell me how to be pastor of the church. And everybody can tell me what I need to do in this situation and what I need to do in that situation and what I need to do here and what I need to do there. But I base my decisions most of the, well, all the time on these guidelines, whether this is God's will or not or God's plan or not. This is the guidelines that I use when I'm searching for them. God... Does what I say or about to say or about to do, does it please you? Because God, I want your will in my life to be pleasing to you. So God, whatever I'm about to do and God, whatever I'm about to say, 
Does it please you? God, does it bring glory to you? God, is this bringing glory to you or is this bringing glory to me? God, is this lifting you up or is it lifting me up? God, does this bring peace or does this bring confusion? Because I read where God's not the author of confusion. And God, if this brings into confusion, this can't be your will. So God, does this bring peace or does it bring confusion? Another thing I ask is, God, does this multiply or does this divide the kingdom of God? Is this bringing division among your kingdom? Is this bringing division or is it building it up? Is that building it up or turning it, tearing it down? And then I ask God, okay, God, if this is your will for my life, does it bear witness to the scripture? Is it doing what the word of God says? Is it going to the plan of God or is it going against the God's word? And last, and one of the most important things that I ask myself, God, when, is this your will or not? How will I feel when I stand before you about this decision? God, when I do this and I think it's your will, how will I feel about it? God, I don't want to be fighting you. And I don't want to stand before you when we've been, I've been fighting you for a lifetime and I've been fighting you over my will instead of your will. Church, I know we're not going to shout this morning. I never intended for you to shout this morning. I, what I intended for you to do was listen to me intently I, and, and, and look at your life I, and say, Lord, am I fighting you or am I following you? Am I fighting you for my life? Am I fighting you in my home? Am I fighting you on my job? Am I fighting you in my resources? God, am I fighting your will for my life? God, what would you have me to do? Because if you're not careful, you'll find yourself fighting God. Gracious Father, we come before you right now. God, you see every man, woman, boy, and girl. God, you are God that speaks. You're not a silent God. Lord, you said your sheep know your voice. So if we know your voice, you must be speaking. So God, I ask you right now, speak to these men and women. Speak to their heart. Speak to their life. Show them your will. God, as they seek, may they find. As they knock, may it be open. As they ask, may they receive. God, you see individuals in this house today. And this word hit a place in their heart. God, I pray you'll put a hedge of protection about them. Because the enemy is trying to destroy the will of God in their life. The enemy is trying to tell them they can't. It's no use. It'll never happen. God, this morning you see that one that is tired. Tired from the struggle. Tired from the fight. Tired from the battle. Work in their life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me all over the house. If this morning I was to pass out a pen and paper and say, what's God's will for your life? What would you put on that piece of paper? What's God's will for your life? Some of you are right, I don't know. I don't have a clue. I used to know. I thought I knew. This morning I want you to understand you can know God's good, acceptable, and complete will for your life and then quit fighting God and start following God I just can't say that enough this morning quit fighting God God's for you he's not against you he's trying to give you life not kill you he's trying to work for you he's trying to bless you he's trying to lift you up find God's will this morning, I know I went over a little bit longer than I normally preach. 
but I want to give you an opportunity to come this morning and bow before God and say, God, this morning I'm not asking you for worldly things. I'm not asking you for healing. I'm not asking you for finances. I'm asking you for your will in my life. Why did you create me? Why did you give me the strength that you gave me and the weaknesses that you gave me? God, I want to know your will. Would you begin to move and come all over this place right now? God's challenging some of you. God's saying, do you really want my will? Do you really want to know or you just want to? You just want to live and do your own thing. Would you begin to come right now? I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to drag you down here. If you want to know God's will, you're going to have to do it on your own. You're going to have to come and say, God, I'm tired of fighting. Some of you are fighting salvation. God's been calling you to salvation. And you've been running. You've been running from it. But God, why? I just come this morning to give myself away to you, Lord. God, today I give up. Today, God. Today, God. speak to me. I gotta have your will. Show me. I gotta know your will. I've never seen. If you want me to go to the mission field, I'll go. You want me to preach, I'll preach. You want me to work in children's ministry, I will. You want me to drive the van? You want me to teach a Sunday school class? You You want me to finance ministries? You want me to be a financer? You want me to be a director? God, what is your will? Let your love shine through me. And I would today somebody just say, Lord, I give up. You win. You win. Lord, I see your word. I'm not stepping back in that ring to fight another fight. I'm not going another round with you, God. By the master of the same. God, what great men and what great women. God, I pray that they know your will. They come in an agreement with your will in their life. They they come to a place, God, that they know beyond the shadow of a doubt. God, you didn't put them through that situation because you're mad at them. You you put them in that situation so they can find your complete will. You didn't do it to hurt them. You've done it to help them. Shining with compassion in your eyes. God, you've done it to help them. That complete will. That complete perfect will of God. They start shining on me. God, you carry them through those places. You, you put them in those places that the they may know the will of God. You didn't put them in that, that tragedy to kill them. You put them in that tragedy to get them in the place where they can operate in your perfect will. You didn't bless them like you did. For them, you blessed them for you. Yes, Jesus. Speak to me. Yes, Lord, your will for Show my life. What I've never seen before. Your will for my life, God. God, if I'm not a mistake, Lord, I want then I'm a to purpose. What is your purpose? If you can take what's wrong and make it right. Oh. God, if I'm not a mistake, I'm a purpose. What is that purpose? Yes, Lord. That's right, Stacy. Obey God. Come on, church. Obey God here for a moment. Sleep You're gonna have to seek and search and hunt and look. God, what is your will? Lord, I want to be a witness. If you can take what's wrong and make it right. Lord, I'm not fighting you. I'm not gonna fight against you, Lord. 
I pray they shall shine. Thank you, Jesus. Let your love shine. Thank you, Jesus. In the night. I'm not fighting you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I believe I can make the statement again. We find ourselves fighting God more than we do Satan many times. Fighting God more than we do Satan many times in our life. This morning needs to be a morning where you say, I surrender. God, I'm not stepping back in that ring for another round. You won. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to become your, your servant. See, in biblical days, When the kings went out to battle, when they would win the war, when when they would take the city, all the inhabitants of that city became their servants. When the king won the battle, all the people of that city became their servants. And this morning you need to say, Lord, I surrender. The battle's over. The fight's over. I'm now yours. You're the king, I'm not the king. You're the leader, I'm the follower. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Travis, I want you to sing another chorus. If you need to leave, I want you to leave. But there's people here this morning that's really seeking the will of God for their life. Like I said, you're not going to find God's will with, now I lay me down to sleep prayer. You're not going to find God's will with, Lord, I thank you for this food, bless it to my body. It's going to take some seeking. It's going to take some searching and some praying. Saying, God, I got to know. God, I got to know. God, I got to know. I've seen God take men and women that couldn't preach or couldn't read and call them to preach. God's got to read. Whatever place he puts you in, He put you there to bring you out for His purpose, for His will. Thank you, Jesus. If you need to go, you feel free. You're dismissed to go. God bless you. You'll be here Wednesday night seeking the will of God. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you for being here today. I want you to go in God's will. Sacrifice only and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Have your way, Lord. I surrender. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. surrendering right now I'm surrendering I surrender Lord God I need my peace back I need you to restore to me the joy of my salvation God I need you 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 Lord I need you, Lord. Your will in my life. Your perfect will in my life. I surrender. God, He's a purpose. He's a purpose, God. Spirit, may He find that surrender. Purpose. May He not be on the shadow of doubt. May He follow you and not fight you. To the end. For that purpose and will in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.